I want to welcome you all, all over the world. I know we have people that have joined from Nigeria, from you know, United Kingdom, from Canada, of course, all over the United States of America, and everywhere you have connected to this service. I'm praying that the Almighty God himself will bless all of us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will meet everyone at the very point of our needs in the name of Jesus. We welcome you to our live broadcast so very specially. You are very special, and the Almighty God will make your blessing also special in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a new month, the month of April, the fourth month of the year, the beginning of the second quarter. And it's very, very special indeed because God has given us, you know, a very unique theme for the month of April. And the theme is the trumpet of Jubilee. The trumpet of Jubilee. But this morning, the topic is even, you know, more uh, prophetic, more interesting. And I believe it will be our experience in this new month in the name of Jesus because the topic says the cruising altitude, the cruising altitude. Now the text is from Leviticus 25. I will take only one verse, verse number nine. Leviticus 25, verse nine, and we are looking at the topic, the cruising altitude from the theme, uh, the trumpet of Jubilee. Then shall thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. On the 10th day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Brethren, until a flight reaches the cruising altitude, everyone on board is on a lockdown. They tell you, don't sit, I mean, don't get up, sit down where you are. But you are not even only sitting down, you must belt yourself, buckle yourself down, and there is no movement. When the flight takes off, until it gets to the cruising altitude, everyone on board is on a lockdown. Everyone on board a plane is waiting for that sound of the cruising altitude, the signal that the pilot will give, and then you will hear, now we are at the cruising altitude. Everyone, eagerly will be waiting after takeoff. The experience of life can be likened to a flight experience. When a flight takes off, there are clouds of turbulence before the cruising altitude. And beloved, everyone must go through life's turbulence before the cruising altitude. I mean, we can look at so many examples in scriptures, but if you focus on Joseph, Moses, and baby Jesus, you know, for our illustration, that will be sufficient. Joseph, as you very well know, went through the turbulent clouds before the cruising altitude. The flight of Moses took off with clouds of turbulence created by Pharaoh seeking to kill the Hebrew boys. Stories in Exodus 2, 1 to 3. Exodus 2, 1 to 3. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Verse number 2. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Verse 3. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flats by the river's blink. Moses took off the journey of his life breaking through clouds of turbulence. Brethren, do you know that the flight of baby Jesus, our Lord and Savior at bat, took off with clouds of turbulence created by Herod seeking to kill baby Jesus. The story is in Matthew 2, 13 and 14. Matthew 2, 13 and 14. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Brethren, the point we are making is that every one of us 
will have to go through clouds of turbulence before arriving at the cruising altitude. But beloved, after going through the clouds of turbulence comes a sound from the pilot indicating that we are now at the cruising altitude. May I announce to you that we are about to arrive at the cruising altitude of year 2020 in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the clouds of turbulence is about to end. I can't hear your amen even though I know you are far from me. For Moses, the sound came by the burning bush experience. Burning bush experience when the sound of the altitude, the cruising altitude came. Exodus 3, 1, 1 to 4. Exodus 3, 1 to 4. The Bible said, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Verse number 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush born with fire, and the bush was not consumed. In verse number 3, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. Verse number 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. That was that signal. That was that sound. That was that trumpet for, for Moses saying now it's time to get to your cruising altitude. Because before now, he's been running from Pharaoh. For baby Jesus, the death of Herod was the sound of the cruising altitude. Matthew 2, 19 to 21. Matthew 2, 19 to 21. And when Aaron was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, verse number 20, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead, which sought the young child's life. And in verse number 21, and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. The cruising altitude came with a sound. I am praying and trusting the Almighty God that this very month marks the beginning of that sound of our cruising altitude in this year 2020 in the mighty name of Jesus. For Joseph, the invitation to the palace was the sound of the cruising altitude. The story is in Exodus 41, 38 to 44. Exodus 41, 38 to 44. The Bible says that Pharaoh invited him, and Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this is? Is a, a man in whom the Spirit of God is. Verse number 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. In verse number 40. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Verse 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. That will be sufficient. He moved from all the clouds of turbulence in the prison, in Potiphar's house, in the pit, and now in the palace at the cruising altitude. And believing the Almighty God, it is time for someone to enter the cruising altitude of life, having passed through several clouds of turbulence. Now is your time to cruise in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the question to be asked is, what are the characteristics of the clouds of turbulence that precede the cruising altitude? Because many flights actually crashed before attaining cruising altitude, just at takeoff, as going through the turbulence. Because there are certain things that must be carefully observed when you are going through the clouds of turbulence so you can arrive ultimately and safely so at your cruising altitude. So what are the characteristics, what are the features of the clouds of turbulence? What are the things that happens, you know, during the cloud of turbulence? What is the experience? Well, number one is lockdown. Moses was in a lockdown first at Nile and then the backside of the desert. When you board a plane and you are taking off, like I said before, you are locked down. You can't get up. If somebody is standing up, the fly will not take off. Everybody must sit down. They move around and check that you are locked down. 
Moses had a lockdown experience during, it, during his clouds of turbulence. Exodus 2, 3, and 4, the Bible says, And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for an ark. I read that before. He was put by, by Nile. He was locked down there. The mother could no longer hide him, and so he had to be abandoned by the riverside. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, also was at the backside of the desert, running away from Pharaoh. The first sign that turbulence is around, clouds of turbulence is going on before the cruising altitude is a lockdown experience. Joseph was in a lockdown, first in the pit, and then in Potiphar's house, and then in the prison. It was when he went through those clouds of turbulence that he can now arrive at the palace is cruising altitude. Jesus, baby Jesus, was in a lockdown in Egypt. The parents had to escape to Egypt. What is the second characteristic of clouds of turbulence? Well, threat and fear. Threat and fear. At that time, the hostesses, the cabin crew, they are not necessarily laughing with you because if you are not sitting down, they tell you, sit down there. They are not joking. At that time, there is fear. Even the passengers are afraid as the flight is going through the turbulence. They, 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 nobody is really smiling as such. There is threat and fear. For Moses, Pharaoh was a threat. For baby Jesus, Herod was a threat. And for Joseph, his brothers. The feature of clouds of turbulence includes threat and fear. And number three, the feature or the characteristics of the clouds of turbulence that precede the cruising, cruising altitude is strict rules. There are strict rules. Pharaoh issued rules in Egypt at the birth of Moses, Herod at the birth of Jesus, and Potiphar for Joseph. Whenever that the plane is taken off and passing through clouds of turbulence, there are strict rules. The sign will come right there. Make sure you fasten your seatbelt. You will hear the pilot say something. You will hear the cabin crew, a cabin crew member saying something. There are strict rules. Now, when you look at these features, you will certainly discover that this defines the same experience of COVID-19, lockdown, threats, fear, and strict rules are the features when the plane goes through the clouds of turbulence. The world is going through clouds of turbulence of COVID-19 with lockdown and threats and fear and strict rules. Ladies and gentlemen, every plane that survives the clouds of turbulence must come to enjoy the cruising altitude. We are going to, by God's grace, go through these clouds of turbulence successfully, and then we shall enter to our cruising altitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what do pilots and passengers do to survive the clouds of turbulence? What do they do? Well, few things, and it becomes instructive for us as well. Since lockdown is equivalent to clouds of turbulence, that question can also be, what must we do in the lockdown experience? Three things, and then I will almost be done. What must I do in the lockdown? Well, stay with the air traffic controller. That's what the pilots do. When they are in the cloud of turbulence, they are in contact on a constant basis with the air traffic controllers. You know, many years ago, maybe in 2001, I believe, uh, January or February, you know, we're traveling from Baltimore uh, back to Nigeria through London Heathrow, and it was a terrible, terrible storm. Oh, my God. I mean, the plane took off, and it was bam, bam, bam. It was really, really bad. You know, the kind of flight that you had quickly checking whether you have a wheel or not. I mean, it was, it was extremely, extremely bad. Anyhow, you know, then this pilot, a very interesting pilot, one of the very pilots of any flight that I ever took. He said, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that this flight is very, this, this cloud is very thick and turbulent, and, but never mind, you know, everything will be all right very soon because we are in touch with the air traffic controller and very soon they will give us an altitude where everything will be calm. And I was saying to myself, like, why are you telling us? Just tell them to, <laughs> to take us, you know, to that altitude where there will be peace. This really is too bad. But it was as if he had what I said. And then the, the pilot came again and said, well, they told us to stand by. 
They told us to stand by. So we are standing by. And I said, oh, my God. You know, stand by doing what? And then he was standing by waiting for the instruction. My first point, I will continue that story because this pilot spoke quite a bit to us and I learned many lessons, you know, on that day on that flight. But the very first point from what the pilot said so far is that the pilot stayed in touch with the air traffic controller. Ladies and gentlemen, beloved brothers and sisters, do you know that our air traffic controller is Jesus Christ? Jesus is the way. He is the way. He's the only one who knows where the rough weather is. He's the only one that can calm the rough weather. He's the only one that can take care of us. This time of lockdown, I therefore ask you to stay connected permanently with our own air traffic controller, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, if you, however, say you are going to change the altitude to that place, you know, where there is calm by yourself, using your own brain, you will crash land. Because this pilot, as I was saying the other time, they said they asked us to stand by. And in my mind, I was wondering, come on, if you know where the, you know, where the, 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 the altitude is, where there is peace and calm, then just, just go there. Again, as though he had what I said in my heart. The pilot came back and said, well, you know, when they ask us to stand by, they are not denying us access to the altitude. All they are doing is to clear the space for us. The plane that, was, that is up somewhere there, they move, move it aside. The one that is down there, they move it to the side. And when the altitude is clear for us, they will give us that same space. At that point, I had the Holy Spirit say to me that whenever I ask you to stand by in every storm of life, I'm not denying you access to peace. I'm only clearing the demon to the left that is, you know, going to disturb you at that altitude. I'm pushing those that should go down to go down. I'm moving things around so that when you get to your cruising altitude, it will be rest and joy all the way. So that's why I'm saying to you, let us stay connected to our air traffic controller, Jesus Christ, the way. As we go through this moment of cloud of darkness, uh, of, 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 of turbulence, of COVID-19. Now, of course, there are pilots who, you know, uh, are reckless. And I found one in a crash in Nigeria some years, some years back. And the news, I caught it from, from Daily Trust of uh, November 9, 2011. The caption says, Nigeria, 2006 ADC plane crash. Pilot defied instruction not to fly. The ADC aircraft incident of 2006 that claimed so many lives, including that of the then Sultan of Shokoto, Alaji Mohamed Machido, would have been avoided if the pilot had adhered to an earlier warning given to him by the control tower at the Inamdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja, not to take off due to wind shear alert. The former director of Air Accident Investigation Bureau, AAIB, engineer Angus Ifian Yozaka, has said. Speaking with Daily Trust, he said the ADC plane was the second in line of aircraft at the airport that were asked not to take off as the weather was not conducive for flying. He said the pilot of the first plane obliged, but that of the ADC plane defied the order, only to crash a few minutes after takeoff. End of quote. This is what happens to those who are not staying connected to the air traffic controller. This is the time you must all stay connected to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so we don't crash. So that's the very first thing that we must do at this moment of clouds of turbulence. Only those who survive clouds of turbulence arrive at their cruising altitude. You will not crash land in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, what do you do during the clouds of turbulence, during an experience like the one we are going through now. Well, you know very well when turbulence is going on and you are on the plane, they ask you, buckle up. I've said that many times, they buckle up, buckle up. They are moving around telling you, buckle up. Even at, at some point, the, uh, you know, the, the, the cabin crew themselves will have to sit down and everybody buckle up. What does that mean? Buckle up means get serious, get serious, get serious, get serious, get serious. This is the time to get serious with God. Get serious. Everything the air, air traffic controller says, you take serious. 
at the moment of turbulence, when they say, bend your head down, you bend your head down, sit down, buckle up, you, you do so. You know, every instruction must be observed. That was what Joseph did in Genesis 39, 8 and 9. Genesis 39, 8 and 9. Joseph got serious with God, but he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my hand. Verse number 9. There is none greater in this house than I, neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Beloved, this is the time to get serious with God. Obey all his words. I've had some, some unpleasant things on the social media about, you know, husband and wife and families at this time still quarreling in malice how can anybody be in, in turbulence and you are still in uh, in malice in unforgiveness you're still committing sins i mean i can't even believe that some people are trying to sell you know materials and exploit people when something like this is going on i thought it's time for everybody to be afraid and fear god but you still see people going around and committing sin as if everything is okay. During turbulence of life, everyone gets serious with God or everyone should get serious with God. I wish that the way people are afraid of coronavirus is the same way we fear God. The world will have been a better place to be. Buckle up in the turbulence of life. Get serious. Get serious with the word of God. At that time, the pilots will be looking at the dashboard and check whether the engine is functioning very well. Pilots don't go to the restroom at this time. They, everybody stay with their equipment, with their instrument, and the equipment and the instrument of a child of God is the word of God. Joshua 1 in verse 8, Joshua 1 verse 8 says that this, this, the, the, the word of the Lord must not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's what pilots do in turbulence. They stay focused on their equipment. No time to go to the restroom. Passengers will sit down. Even if you are pressed to go to the restroom, they insist that you stay there. Everybody waiting for that signal. Get serious with prayers. When they say buckle up, say get serious with prayers. Because at that time, the, the pilots are talking continuously to the air traffic controller. They talk to them, giving their signals and taking information from them. That is prayer. It is time to get serious with prayers. So buckle up means get serious with God. Buckle up means get serious with the word of God. Get serious means get serious. Buckle up means get serious with prayers. Once the plane break through the cloud of turbulence comes that sound that we have all been waiting for and that announcement of the cruising altitude oh and when we get into the cruising altitude everybody have a sign of relief the trumpet of jubilee is the announcement of the cruising altitude leviticus 25 verse 9 then shall thou cause the trumpet of jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all, all your land. Is a change from the difficulties of the past. The sound, the trumpet of jubilee, the sound of that trumpet is telling to slaves, now you are going to get into freedom. It's telling debtors, now your debts are fully paid off. That trumpet is sounding in our lives, in our home, and the church of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Once the plane attains the cruising altitude as I close, certain things begin to happen automatically. And I believe this will begin to happen very soon in the name of Jesus. Five points and then I will be done. Number one, set free from lockdown. Set free from lockdown. Because the fellow who had been holding to the P just suddenly jump up. We'll not even wait for anybody to say anything. Bam, you see everybody getting up and running to the restroom at that time. Why? Because now we are at the cruising altitude. As we enter the cruising altitude of this year, 
The lockdown will be over, and will be over very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. Leviticus 25, verse 39. Leviticus 25, verse 39. And if thy brother that dwell by thee be waxing poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. Bondage will end. Just sit down even when you want to be. Sit down when you want to walk around. That will just cease immediately because now we are the cruising altitude. The second thing that happens as we get into the cruising altitude, liberty restored. Liberty restored. Leviticus 25 verse 10. Leviticus 25 verse 10. And ye shall hallow, you know, the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. And ye shall return every man unto his family. Ladies and gentlemen, when you were in the storm, you couldn't go to the you know, next cabin to go and greet your friend that you met when you were, while you were at the airport. There was no liberty to move around and stretch your leg. There's even no liberty. Sometimes you cannot even eat because the turbulence is too much. But once you get into the cruise, cruising altitude, there comes liberty. Oh, liberty is coming our way very, very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, if you receive it, let your amen be a very resounding amen. Number three, once we enter the cruising altitude, which is going to happen very soon as we end this moment of clouds of turbulence, the next thing that happens is provision and eating begins. Suddenly, you see the cabin crew, they roll out the trays, the food comes out, then they begin to ask you, do you want chicken? Do you want fish? What do you want? What drink do you want? You see provisions coming in. I can see provisions coming into our lives this season as we cross from turbulence into the cruising altitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Leviticus 25 verse 12, for it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you, ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. The fourth thing that happens is rest and restoration. Some people don't want to go to the restroom, but they have not been able to sleep all along because of the turbulence. Suddenly they push their chair back and uh, uh, now they can sleep. Somebody is going to enjoy rest and restoration pretty soon in the mighty name of Jesus. Leviticus 25 verse 4. Leviticus 25 verse 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. In verse 13, Leviticus 12 verse 13. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man into his possession. When you enter the cruising altitude, you enter into rest and restoration. May that become your experience from now on in the mighty name of Jesus. So finally, point number five, fellowship and interaction resumes. Then you see people moving from cabin to cabin, from eye to eye. Now they can talk. Now they can just do just about anything else they couldn't do before. You see people gathering and talking. Somebody will go to the other, 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 other eye and talk to the friends and, and so on and so forth. Brethren, we have been denied fellowship for a long time. There are many people that you, you used to see at least once in a week that you have not been able to see in almost a month. That's what happens during turbulence because you are asked to sit down. You can't go from row to row when you're on the fly. But when you enter the cruising altitude, you can move around the cabin as you want. I'm believing the Almighty God that moving around and fellowship will resume pretty soon in the mighty name of Jesus. Because once we go through the clouds of turbulence successfully, then you must arrive at your cruising altitude. Leviticus 25 verse 39 that I read before, if you go to verse 40, say, but as an hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. There are many, you know, husbands now that are trapped in Nigeria because they couldn't beat the deadline, they couldn't get a flight, the family, they are here, they've not been able to see themselves all this while. That wasn't the plan. But then the turbulence had separated them. I bring word to you, very, very soon, the fellowship and the interaction with your friends and family will resume back again in the mighty name of Jesus. So in summary, after the clouds of turbulence comes the cruising altitude. While in the clouds 
stay connected with God stay connected with God and I say that one more time stay connected with God this is the time to stay connected with God spend this time very well stay connected with God in worship in praises in his word while in the clouds buckle up and get serious with God get serious with the word get serious with prayers that's what you do in the clouds Joseph broke through the clouds of turbulence and enjoyed the cruising altitude. Moses broke through the clouds of turbulence and enjoyed the cruising altitude. Jesus broke through the clouds of turbulence and he lives forevermore. We are living the turbulent clouds of 2020 by the grace of, of, of God and set for the cruising altitude in this month of April in the mighty name of Jesus for the trumpet of jubilee is about to sound can i hear somebody say a loud amen? amen so let me issue a simple warning many plane crash or many plane crashes resulted from the loss of contact from the control tower go and read the history of plane crashes you are going to find there that oh they lost in touch with the, with, the, with the pilot or the pilot lost you know contact with the control tower when never anyone at all when you lose touch with your maker when you are separated from your maker it's a matter of time that life would crash that's why i'm warning those who are not saved you are not connected with Jesus you've not given your life to him that's a risky separation that can crash your life and I'm begging you this morning wherever you are get connected with your air traffic controller you will never get to the cruising altitude except the air traffic controller grants you the cruising altitude if you attempt to go there by yourself you would expect to crash the easiest way to be destroyed in this season is the loss of contact with the Lord Jesus oh you are saved before but now you are backsliding you are saved before but now you have gone back again to the world it's time to reconnect with the Lord Jesus for as long as the pilot is still in connection, in contact with the control tower, there is hope of a safe landing. When contact is lost, it's over. It is a must to get the connection with Jesus permanently. It must be running permanently. That connection must be working permanently. Otherwise, disaster is guaranteed. It's my prayer. That by the grace of the Almighty God, every lost connection with the Lord will be restored back this morning. And as we stay connected, the Lord himself, our air traffic controller, will take us from these horrible clouds of turbulence into our cruising altitude. So we need to talk to him. That's what the pilots do. They keep communication up and on with the air traffic controller until he gets them to that cruising altitude. So this morning, we are the pilots and we want to get in touch with our, with our air traffic controller and speak to him and say, Lord, we are still in turbulence. Please take us to that altitude that we can cruise. And I believe our air traffic controller, Jesus Christ, the way we take us to that altitude where there will be no more turbulence. Can we rise, please? Thank you.